All right, hey everybody, welcome to a video review I'm doing of the 3D Sen emulator. It's a innovative, fairly new kind of uh, NES game emulator that will take the old 2D video games from the NES and let you play them in a way that makes them kind of 3D. Um, it does that by, you know, doing some processes within the emulator itself and using some special rule sets for each game that generate these voxel-based arts based on the pixels that are in the game. And um, some of the effects are pretty good. Some of them are not so good right now, but uh, it's in a beta right now. So uh, I'll show you what it looks like, how it works. And uh, if you want to try it out for yourself, uh, we'll start off by showing you how you can do that. So here, if you go into Discord, this is the only place I've been able to find to download this. There is a Steam page for it, but the Steam page doesn't really let you download it. Just kind of, you just kind of have to search around until you find the Discord. But if you find the 3D Send Discord channel, go into the uh, beta channel and then go to pinned messages up here. And then you'll find the three different options for downloading it. Either, you know, Windows, Mac, or Linux, depending on your system. And once you download it, it's uh, just a zip file. Open that up, and uh, you'll have your different, uh, different little icons here. Obviously, 3 dsenddemodx is the one to run. This uses Unity, if you're uh, familiar with it. So, you know, it's okay. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of Unity these days, but it's okay. But let's see if we can get this to run. Sometimes it runs cleanly, sometimes it doesn't. If you end up with this type of thing happening where it's not it's not just popping up, um, best thing to do is hit Control Shift Escape if you're on Windows, and then you can just uh, close the process and then go ahead and try it again. And it should open up maybe the second time. Maybe not the second time. Maybe not ever. Okay, so here we go. Uh, the first time you run this, you may get a warning saying that the software isn't trusted or not signed, one of the two. And that's just because the application hasn't been um, they haven't gone through the trouble of making it like an official thing with not with Windows and specifically you could generate a, a key for it but they haven't done anything that need to really do with programs these days so it's fine to run I've uh, I've checked it on my with my virus scanners and everything and it's it's fine so don't worry too much about that all right so here in the settings um, you have a bunch of things you can play around with uh, I'm going to switch this to render. No, eh, maybe. No, we'll leave it at direct. So you can change a bunch of different options on here. You can make the games run faster. You can make the light more. I think that's brightness. I don't know. Uh, you can use keyboards, gamepad, whichever thing you want to do. And uh, I prefer, you know, gamepads because that's just my preference. And once you get all that stuff set up, the uh, next thing is go to the games. So you do need to have uh, ROMs in order to play these. If you don't know how to get ROMs, I'm not going to tell you how to get them. I'll just say that, uh, I mean, the internet is a large place and Google and Bing will be your best friends if you're looking for NES ROMs. So um, let's start off with uh, something simple like Castlevania. Also, I've seen in other videos where those pictures are like it'll actually have a picture of the game in, in on mine, it doesn't. So I don't know if that's just the, the beta version that I'm using that doesn't work that well, but uh, oh well. But as you can see here, the tail screen looks kind of normal and then it turns out you can kind of move stuff around. So that's kind of cool, right? Using like uh, the analog sticks on a control pad, you can actually move the camera around or you can break back to normal. You can also zoom out or you can zoom way in if you want to like fill the screen more. There's uh, all sorts of options here. But this is basically what it does for all the games. This is kind of a weird, <laughs> a weird thing they've got going on. But um, 
This is one where it doesn't have... Well, I don't see any shadows anyway. I think, oh wait, there is a shadow kind of in the background there. You can kind of see a shadow on uh, Diamond Belmont here. He clips into the wall. <laughs> like, yeah, there you go. You can see the shadow like on the floor and the wall here. You can also see like uh, curtains are moving around swaying. They've made those, you know, three-dimensional. I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, all this is done in real time, so all rendered and pretty neat when you uh, really get down to it. The thing that is kind of weird about it is uh, when you're used to playing the NES games just, uh, you know, the old way, and you're used to making jumps, <laughs> like, it's hard to describe, like, when I get to Mario, I'm able to be more apparent, but, like... It just seems... Things are just, like, a couple pixels off, I guess, would be the only way I can describe it, where... It's not, it's not like, horrible and game-breaking, it's just, like, you have to kind of relearn where you need to be when you jump and your timing with stuff. Because... Being able to jump, like, knowing... Like, where you are when you jump is kind of important, I guess. Like, knowing that you're at the edge of the platform. Maybe I'm not, like, explaining that well, but... Oh well. But you can see a lot of things here are three-dimensional, like... Even, like, that column there in the background. They've done a pretty good job of making that... You know, pop out from the background instead of just being, like, a... What it normally would be is just a flat, flat part of the background. And they have the boss here, and the boss is just, you know, a 2D character that uh, generated, and <laughs> this looks the same on front and back. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really not bad. This is a, uh, it is kind of cool. Not the orb here is gonna be pulsing like a, I don't know what, in lawnmower engine. So that's pretty neat, right? I'm not, uh, I think that's pretty cool. Let's uh, go over to something, something else here. Let's do like Donkey Kong, it's like an old classic type of game. I can get it to start, there it goes. So look. Uh, just like here is like, it's pretty cool. The ladders are, you know, three dimensional. That barrel down there, the oil is three dimensional. All the barrels are three dimensional. It's all pretty cool stuff. So, if I could just get my darn controller to work like I want, that would be neat. Would you stop throwing the damn barrels for just a second? Thank you. All right. So, yeah, I mean, that's Donkey Kong. <laughs> Donkey Kong himself looks a little bit more 3D, but he's still clearly <laughs> at least a 2D. It's weird, it's like a 2D, 3D model. I don't know how to describe that. The umbrella itself is actually, well, it's like three-dimensional. But, I so that's neat. But anyway, that's, that's another one. <laughs> um, Kung Fu's a pretty cool one. The, uh, the dragons here are kind of 3D-ish. Scoreboard is a little bit different than other games. It's actually treated as a separate... It's treated like an actual 3D model. And I'll show you how that's different when we get to something like Zelda. But, you know, this is pretty cool, I think, being able to do this. <laughs> and the shadows there, like... Having, you know, those shadows and platform like that makes it really hard to play when you're doing this, but... Like, it's, uh... I mean, it's pretty cool, like, the... The way that adds a little bit more depth to the game. Pretty cool. Stick manhole. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> so that was that. Oh, look at Legend of Zelda here. Legend of Zelda is probably the one I think is done the worst. So, like, when you look at, like, all these 
those rocks, the cliffside faces, all that stuff, it, it all looks really bad. Um, like, it doesn't look like they've really figured out exactly how they want to do some of this. Like, this part looks cool. Like, they've done a good job here. And then when it comes to the, the items themselves, the items are going to look good in that, in that screen, but... Um, I don't know, the, the rest of it looks weird. And then right here, like, this is all supposed to be rocks, I think? That's how the original looked, but... And then the other weird thing about this is... Everything is tilted, like, 45 degrees. Like, like nothing is... Instead of being straight up and down, it's all tilted 45 degrees, which I don't really like. I would rather everything be, like, straight up and down if we were going to do it that way. And then you can just, you know do it like that and then it looks it would look better or but i mean that would also make it weird i don't know it's really hard for a top-down game i guess i guess the 45 degree angle and everything maybe that looks best i, I can't say without you know having seen it myself but this is really weird looking You know, it's, it's kind of cool how the items and the hearts and everything change. How they uh, kind of change the... They kind of rotate around. It's it's pretty, pretty cool. These enemies look super weird. I don't know what's up with those. I always pictured them as being like cylinders, right? Like that's what they looked like to me. That were just kind of like rotating in circles. Oh, uh, the water here is is cool, I guess. It's just weird how it's going over the bridge. These trees... Instead of these trees standing up like everything else does, they made them... flat? Uh, it's... real strange. <laughs> it's real strange. I, I, don't, I don't really like that. And then the dungeons, I don't really like either because... Again, this 45 degree thing is so weird. Like, because the rest of the room isn't like that. And then, like, here's the back side in case you're curious. But, like, if you were to look into this room, like, I can't rotate this, but, like, if you look in the back of the room here, if you look into the door, everything's tilted 45 degrees. If you saw that, you'd probably wonder why you, like, what you had smoked or something, because this just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, so, I'm not, I don't really, I don't really dig the way they've done the graphics on this one. I think. They could be a lot better. Um, I do like the way the items are, and I like the way the sword is, sort of, other than the fact that it's constantly rotating in your hand. That's kind of strange. A, kind of a weird choice. Because, uh... I, I, I mean, I have a hard time picturing someone using a sword by constantly spinning their wrist 360 degrees like they have a drill hand um so i mean that's just my thought on it but that's legend of zelda uh just do mega man real quick see how this one looks and uh you know this is kind of cool with the, the way the shadows going to the boxes it's, i mean it's probably not really intentional but it's, it's, it's kind of neat Hey Google, stop Roomba. Stop my uh, my vacuum from vacuuming because you know it's somehow loud downstairs. And yeah, these things are really weird in, in this like in this kind of 3D perspective. Like those flying things, just the way they move is. Strange. I don't. I don't know how to describe that. They're not. They're not like. I mean, it's not like they do anything that they don't normally do, but they're just the way that they move. With this kind of perspective, it's really strange. Uh, let's see. All right. So just through here. I kind of just want to get to Cutman, or get far enough along to get to the boss room. Or 
course I have to not die, which complicates things. One thing I did notice about this is, um, the, like right now the slowdown, you'll see it here in a minute, but the slowdown is really real. And, you know, I'm using a 1080 Ti for a graphics card, I'm using... Um, but, you know, I've got a good graphics card, got a 9700K processor, so, I mean, as far as gaming goes, that's pretty close to the best you're going to get, unless you're buying, like, um, you know, 9900K. And I know there's going to be a, there's an argument with people, like, thinking AMD is the, the best for everything, but... You do get more frames typically out of 9700 or out of the Intel chips than you do out of AMD. I mean, I'm not saying I, I like. It's not like I think AMD is the best pro or Intel is the best processor ever. AMD beats them in everything that's multi core at this point, but. You know, the. It's for gaming alone, Intel typically. It'll give you a few more, uh, a few more frames per second. There is a heat cost to that, unfortunately, though. All right. So it is. I mean, it's kind of cool. Things explode in 3D, which is interesting to see. Um, all the items are seem to be in 3D. The spikes are in 3D. Kind of cool. This thing looks hideous. Like, that does not look like it was completed at all. <laughs> it looks complete. Oh, no. uh, I'm so glad they did away with these, like, enemies inside the boss room. Um, uh, let me beat Cutman real quick. Nothing cut, man. You ain't got nothing. Garbage. So, I mean, it's Mega Man. And then, uh, do one more here. We'll just do Super Mario Bros. Now, this, this, oh, <laughs> this, I also really don't like the graphics on this one. And, um, like, I don't understand why everything looks like it's made out of jello. I, I mean, the clouds are kind of cool. I like what they did with those and how they move. But, why everything looks like it's made out of jello in the background and the title screen like that i'm not i don't understand that at all <laughs> that's really so weird decision i think um but mario is one of the ones that plays really weird um I'm, i've gotten the hang of it pretty much as far as like knowing where to jump now, so you can't adjust for it, but it's just the way the perspective is, it's hard to like be pixel perfect on things, like because you expect you expect like your timing to be in a certain place and you expect your to be able to see like the exact pixel or pixels touch, like Everything is slightly off. The other thing that's kind of weird is Mars is in the pipe there, but the other thing that's kind of weird is uh, the way when you look at the, the sides of the screen, um, like the way things kind of clip in and out is kind of weird and disorienting, I guess. But, on the other hand, I do really like how, like, you look up on the ceiling and it's like, okay, you can look under the blocks, it's not just a flat, you know, that's flat, that's it's cool. Um, and like I was saying before, like, with the scoreboard in Kung Fu, it's fully 3D, but, like, the one at the top on here on Mario is not, well, it doesn't rotate, it is, it is rendered, it looks like, but it's not, um... It doesn't move when you move the rest of the screen. Like it stays, it stays when I move, rotate everything else. So 
Clearly that's a thing. And also, why are the why are these piranha plants rotating like Okay. <laughs> so like I understand why they Everything doesn't need to rotate, you know, like, coins rotating, cool, but piranha plants rotating? Why? Because you, you're gonna touch them without realizing that you're about to touch them, just be- yeah, see, the <laughs> like, that's- that's just weird, that's a- I, I wish that they didn't rotate, you know? I'm giving the 5,000 here just to see, like, the fireworks, I wanna- I wanna see if those are- those look cool, or if they even happen. Not cool, whatever. Uh, I think going into another dungeon type stage. Yeah. No flower. Still. There we go. All right. Yeah. So I mean, this is basically it. This is the emulator. This is what it does. Uh, it doesn't support every game, obviously. Um, it only supports certain ones. There looks to be a plan for um, the guy who's making this. I think it's like Giad, Giod, or Giad. He uh, he seems to have a plan to make like a a tool that will allow people to create their own um, their own I don't know how, I, don't, I don't know what they call what they're calling it but like their own I guess I'll say like rule set for each game for how to process which uh, is pretty cool and if I had that now I'd stop things from rotating because they're kind of dumb um, there's obviously some weird stuff like the way like the like the castle clips here and how some of the some of the faces are the vertices are filled when they shouldn't be. I don't know if that's because the normal map is flipped or what, but um, there's just a few things in a few spots that are kind of rendered weird. Um, look at the bottom of this. Another example here, like, instead of these being filled, it looks like the normal map is incorrectly fine, so... Um, you get this thing where the bottom doesn't actually... The face isn't filled, and it's just blank, and then you have these weird spots in between. Yeah, I I'm not... I think that's an easy fix. It just needs to get... They just need to actually fix it, because... Like all sides of these cubes should be should be rendered, not you know blank. And maybe he's trying to save some. I don't know. It could be that he's trying to save some uh, some slowdown with the frame rate, but I don't know. Probably make a setting to change that. But at any rate, it's pretty cool. It's a nice little way to add some some life into one of the old games if uh, you're bored with playing them in a way. Um, you basically have the same game with just, you know, kind of messed up graphics. So, it's fun. Uh, if you want to give it a try, just uh, go back to the beginning of the video there where I showed how to get it, and then, you know, do it. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you do, please uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that cool stuff. And hey, share it, because uh, sharing this will not only get me some uh, more views, but it'll get this emulator some more views and uh, hopefully nobody shuts it down and hopefully, uh, you know, they continue working on it and they make it better. Cause I think what they have here is a, it's a really good start, but uh, thanks for watching again. And uh, I'll see you in the next one until then. Try not to die. <laughs>